Before you purchase any podcast equipment, you really wanna think about the investment you're making. When it comes to podcast equipment, you can actually buy stuff up front and never have to upgrade it in the future. And so in this video, I'll be sharing you one of the best setups you can have to start your podcast. Hey, what's up? It's Tom Altecoy with Think Media, helping you with the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do YouTube strategy tips and tech gear reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. One of my clients that I have every month is called Sassy Lashes. They have a YouTube channel where they talk about all things lashes and beauty and stuff like that. And we've been able to take their channel from 30 subscribers to about 12,000 subscribers in just six months. And it's completely revamped their brand. And so when the owner asked me that he wanted to start a podcast, I kind of did some research on finding like, what is a good investment that they could make that we probably wouldn't have to make ever again. But today I wanted to show you a setup that we've just bought from the get go and has literally been the best setup ever. So the microphones we went with were the Shure SM7B mics. These microphones are literally grade A quality. I would say if it came to like an ultimate mic for podcasting, this would actually be the mic. Uh, Omar, that's like overkill. So the funny thing about audio is you actually, like with anything in life, you get what you pay for. But when I think about camera equipment, I know a ton of people that get in over their head when they buy camera equipment because of the dynamic of what shooting photos and videos might entail. But when it comes to audio, if you want the sound that literally the professionals or even your favorite podcast, the, the likelihood of them using this mic is pretty high. Now this mic does come in at around $399, uh, which could be pricey, but like I said, what if I told you you never had to buy a mic as long as life went on? I think that would be a wise investment. So for 400 bucks and buying this mic, you literally right then and there have the ability to produce podcasts at the quality level of all the professionals, as you can hear from my podcast audio right now. And so just definitely something to think about when you wanna invest into a awesome and potentially the best mic on the market. Uh, if you're If that's in your budget range, you would never have to upgrade your microphone ever. The next thing you want to consider when buying your podcast setup is your stand. And you know, a lot of people get arms for their podcasts and things like that, but we wanted to keep it very minimal. We set this up and we tear it down every time we do a shoot day. And so this is a Samson desk uh, mic stand. And we wanted to specifically get this one because it's kind of uh, short in, in height because we podcast on this table. And so if you think about using a desk or a table, uh, you want a short mic stand. We, we were gonna go with another one that was a little more high tech. It had some foam around it. It just sat a little high from where a normal person would sit or their torso. And so we, we like this Samson one, it's about 15 bucks. But make sure you check out the kit link in the description uh, about everything I'm talking about in this video. So the next thing you wanna consider buying uh, is two XLR cords per mic you buy. And so I say that because you don't wanna go straight from this condenser mic into the Zoom recorder. Uh, in between, you want a cloud lifter. Uh, when I was doing research on what podcast equipment to buy and looking at other podcasts that I really like and, he, and I like how they sound, this is almost a necessity when it comes to uh, having the best audio quality possible if you go with the Shure mic. Not all mics will you need a cloud lifter, but at least for this one, you're gonna want it. It's, a, it's $150. And so obviously this can start getting expensive really quick, but again, we, st we from the get-go wanted the best, and so uh, we went in with the investment to, uh, to have all this equipment available, and we'll never have to upgrade ever again. So yeah, you can see how from the mic, we have a three-foot you know, XLR cable. It goes into the cloud lifter, and then from the cloud lifter into the zoom. So that leads us into the recorder and we use the Zoom H6 recorder. And you know, what I love about this is how it just sits, you know, straight on and you know, the interface, how the dials are analog, uh, ability to, you know, change your levels on the go. And anytime I just see it peaking, I can slowly turn it down or whatever. And we also bought this one in particular because of the ability to kind of grow. So if we have a, a third or a fourth person on the show, uh, you can easily just plug in another mic which is awesome. Another thing that's a power tip, like these guys eat batteries like crazy. And so working off batteries when you're shooting a podcast is kind of scary. You don't want anything to come in between, you know, a potential episode when you're 20 minutes in and you're like, dang it, the battery died. Where were we at again? 
So it's really important that you get a long enough micro USB cable. These are like one of the older ones and just have continuous power. Another thing why I like this, that we can just have continuous power and not even waste batteries. Uh, and then secondly, we have a, a headphone splitter so that we can monitor the audio, uh, whoever's on the show, but you can also get a headphone splitter that has maybe five or six of them. Um, so you can, as, as the person maybe running the podcast and not on it, but all that to say, it allow, it really gets you in the zone when you can hear yourself uh, conduct your podcast. So that leads me into the headphones that we use to monitor the audio, and uh, that is the Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. Uh, these headphones are $100 on Amazon, and the reason I went with these ones for them are simply because of the comfort. Uh, they're very comfortable, and then they're also very reliable. Sennheiser is a very well-known brand. I would say, though, you can go as simple as uh, you know, your iPhone headphones, or you don't really need high quality headphones, but I think, you know, if you're gonna be doing longer podcast ep episodes that you want something comfortable, and also something that's like, we wanted, we filmed this podcast, and so we wanted something also sleek and consistent across the board. That's why we didn't just dig up headphones that are in the garage or anything. Um, so look into potentially getting a, a decent pair of headphones if you don't have one already. And then the very last thing I would say is you definitely want an SD card for the Zoom uh, recorder to record your actual podcasts. And you know, these audio files, even though they're raw waveforms, you don't need a huge card. Um, you know, we have a 32 gigabyte and it goes a really long way. Um, and typically I just format the card when we do new batch shoot days and stuff like that. But you know, really to get this professional quality audio, which I also use for the video uh, when I sync up the audio, uh, for a one mic solution, you're looking at about $1,000, and then if you wanted to add a second mic, it's maybe closer to fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. Um, and I think that's just something to keep in mind when creating a podcast. I think, you know, you have the ear, the person's ear for quite some time. You know, if you're doing 15 to even one hour podcasts, you know, it, it, if it's bad quality, people will, will shut it off. And you also could think about uh, the scenarios in which people listen to podcasts, in their car, you know, very sound controlled environment, or even off their phone. You know, if people listening to their podcasts in speaker form, if you can level up your quality on your end, then the experience on the listener's standpoint is actually gonna be leveled up and you'll probably just stand out a little bit more when it comes to whatever you're talking about and the niche you're involved in. So quickly, I just wanted to add what we use to film it. Um, I don't think this has to be extensive at all. Simply saying we use two different LED lights. Uh, I use this little bag as a diffuser, um, but they're just two, two lights that are hitting the subject. The other one's over there. The camera we use to capture the entire podcast uh, is the Sony a7 III. This is uh, one of our workhorse cameras here at Think Media. We use it for almost every video we film and the lens we usually use for almost every video we film, including the podcast I shoot for this uh, client is the 24 to 70 G Master 2.8 lens. Uh, an incredible setup. I think if, you're, if you plan on your podcast being less than 30 minutes, uh, this crushes and I do 4K 30 frames uh, for the whole thing and then I also punch in uh, and we, we output a 1080 file. So I essentially get three angles with this one angle that we shoot. And so uh, something to keep in mind of, you don't have to, I used to shoot this uh, podcast with three different angles, actually like one to the side and one to the other side. And I just found it's just a simple workflow and they always look at this lens. And so I thought it was better to just crop in rather than like pick it up from over here and they're, not, they're no longer looking and you lose that engagement on YouTube. As far as looking down into a lens, and your audience feeling like they're actually talking to you, I guess you could say. We are here, here to, to encourage, encourage you <laughs> during your last journey <laughs> and to show you guys a raw version of how <laughs> silly my husband is, <laughs> of, of what, what things, things are, are really, really like. like. <laughs> In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of working for yourself or working for someone else. Yeah. If you, if you plan on doing like longer form podcasts, you want, might want to consider getting like a camcorder or a Sony a6400 that has no record limit. Um, and so just something to think about. But that's kind of the setup we use to be able to shoot 4K projects and then uh, break it down in a 1080 to produce essentially three angles. So there you have it. That is the ultimate podcast setup and also what we used to film it. And so I think I really encourage you to, if you are going to start podcasts, try to get a camera so you can film it because you can literally reach two people 
uh, with the same message and I think it's a little more powerful. Also check out the other videos in this series where I show you how I edit the podcast for the audio and then also how I quickly edit the podcast uh, for video. Make sure you check out those videos and a uh, question for you is have you started a podcast yet? And if so, what is your podcast on? Let us know in the comment section below and we hope to see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, 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 oh